The Miami Dolphins won't play on Sunday and that is the reward all fans will get after the team's big win on Thursday night. Now, fans can sit back and watch other football. Miami victory on Thursday means the Dolphins can watch the standings and their fantasy football teams without getting stressed and angered. The win moved the Dolphins into a tie with six other teams, including the San Francisco 49ers. Miami owns the 49ers' first-round pick in the next draft. For weeks, Eagles fans have been thanking Miami for their poor start. They own Miami first-round pick. That, heading into Thursday night was a potential top five. Miami schedule is entering a stretch that is favorable to the Dolphins. This weekend, the Vikings, Eagles, Giants, Bears, Seahawks, and 49ers all play football. The 49ers will play the Rams on Monday night. The Seahawks play the Packers who will get Aaron Rodgers back, the Eagles will play in Denver, the Vikings will play against the Chargers. The Giants and Bears have a bye week. It is interesting to follow along with the draft order while there is still eight weeks left in the season but the Dolphins are far from elimination despite their three wins and seven losses. With seven games left on the schedule, and a rather favorable schedule at that, the Dolphins could climb back into the race for the postseason. It will take a small miracle for sure and I'm not playing the homer. Here, I know what I have seen on the field and it hasn't been good. Thursday was great but let's be real, so far, that is not the norm. Miami will play the Jets in New York a week from today and then host the Carolina Panthers followed by the New York Giants. They will have a week 14 bye and then face their toughest remaining game. The Saints and the Titans. Both on the road. They will then wrap the season at Hard Rock against the Patriots. Miami has no wiggle room and no room for error. Thursday could be a catalyst for the rest of the season. It needs to be. The Dolphins are going to need 10 wins to have a shot and that means they need to win out. At least for today, the Dolphins and their fans don't have to sweat out 60 minutes of football and can just enjoy the Thursday victory instead. 4 Takeaways from the Dolphins' Week 10 victory over the Ravens The Miami Dolphins are now 3-7 after surprisingly upsetting one of the better teams in the league in the Baltimore Ravens by a score of 22-10. Miami was dominant defensively, holding Baltimore to one of their worst games of the season in terms of points and yards. They were sending pressure at Lamar Jackson all night that really kept him from extending plays or getting enough time to go through all of his reads. Offensively, the Dolphins still weren't able to do much. However, they were able to survive and put up points when it mattered to keep the Ravens from taking the lead. Here are four things we learned from this win over Baltimore. The defense should have been playing this way all along. This Dolphins defense has played very well the last three weeks. They've given up just 15 points per game in their last three, tied for sixth fewest, and it all started with the game against Buffalo. After the game, cornerback Xavier Howard mentioned that the defense went back to some schemes and coverages that they were using in 2020. Miami defense in 2020 was one of the better groups in the league. Against the Bills, the defense led up a bit in the second half, and their performance against Houston wasn't that impressive because it was Houston. However, this game should tell us that they have this ability against any team, and they should be one of the better units going forward. Javon Holland has a ton of potential. Holland was everywhere on Thursday. He was laying big hits on Devin DuVernay on a run. He was breaking up pass attempts against Marquise Brown. And, where he was used most was in the pass rush. His 21 blitzes were the most for a defensive back since at least 2016. The rookie's performance was graded an 83.7 by Pro Football Focus, which bounced him up to ninth at the safety position on the year. Remember, that this guy has been in the league for 10 weeks. If this growth continues, the sky is the limit for Holland. Tua Tungavailoa should have started the whole game. Brian Flores decided that Tungavailoa injury to the middle finger on his throwing hand was limiting him too much pregame to let him start. Jacoby Brissett got that opportunity for the second game in a row. However, Tunga Vailoa was still available as the backup and was called in when Brissett went down with a knee injury. The quarterback came in and looked pretty normal. He completed 8 of his 13 pass attempts for 158 yards and scored on a sneak to make it a two-score game. If Tunga Vailoa was healthy enough to back up and potentially go in, he should have been starting. That's especially the case when he was making all of the throws they usually ask him to make. Teams are starting to respect Mike Jasicki. 
The Dolphins' offense has been predicated on passes to rookie wideout Jalen Waddell and tight end Mike Jasicki throughout 2021. In this game, however, Jasicki was held without a reception despite being targeted seven times. This can be explained by some of the matchups that the Ravens were using on him. There were numerous times when Baltimore's top cornerback, Marlon Humphrey, was tasked with taking Jasicki out of the play. When a team's best defender is assigned to a tight end that shows a massive sign of respect. That's how teams are starting to view Miami tight end, so the Dolphins will have to find more options to throw to.